Hey, this is Russell, and I work at the video store, the place that we can all go to every week when it's movie night. On days like today, interesting people pop in to rent something. We go through the films that they've loved across their life, and we are just here to help you figure out what you could be watching on streaming platforms and out in cinemas. All right, let's do it. Let's open up the shop. Good morning, chaps. What's up, Russell? Hey, hey. Come on, more enthusiasm. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> We've got ourselves a, a gaddy who's busy finding his energy. How you, Gad? Yeah, I'm here. You there. <laughs> um, we've got a G-Force. How you going? Yo, all right, and yourself, dude. Yeah, cool, man. you got a Russell. Who's <laughs> just trying to motivate his, his workforce. How are you, Russell? I'm good, Gad. Thank nice. you. Uh, welcome to the video store. Thank you for wandering in. Yes. Uh, this is our guest episode. Mm. So on Thursday every week, we, or most weeks, we have ourselves an interesting customer. This is someone who comes to our video store and uh, they're going to pop in to perhaps return something. Um, we look to try find them something to rent and we talk about movies and the movies that they've loved. This week on the show, we're going to have Bongaziwe Mabandla, mm. who is like probably one of the more famous <laughs> musicians in South Africa, yeah. um, at least in a in a world music sense, yes. a, 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 like a very cool sense. Um, he's just killing it. He 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 travels the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's so he's somewhat of a big deal, and we've been um, lucky enough to sort of see his career. Gad, um, myself, and Gad play in the band Short Straw. And we've been backstage many a times, um, many a festivals, um, and it's been great to get to know him. Uh, you went to Varsity with him, hey? After, after with Alistair and Bongi, we were all the same. Yeah. Okay. So he was uh, in, in the acting department, and then we were in the production. Right. The, um, not the, the acting. Like the sort of filmmaking department. Yeah, yeah. I'd get it split into two. Yeah. So yeah. it's performance and the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The other thing is is what you studied. Yeah. Yeah, which is the making of the film. But there's just a term that wasn't yeah. performance. I, yeah. can't, I can't Production. Remember. Right. I, I, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Doesn't I can't. Re- I also went to Afton. I don't even know. What did you major in? Sound design. Okay. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> you know, because no that's, you know, going to feed into your candy business. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they make sounds when I... Aren't you deaf in one ear? Partly. <laughs> I've got like 40% hearing in my left. And, you, my studied, right and you studied sound design. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the one thing I could have done with, uh, with being colorblind. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You say, thank God you're not a, a, color, a colorist. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a color correction um, <laughs> engineer. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Before we get too into this, guys, I just want to make a quick announcement. For everyone that's browsing the aisles, I'm just going to press this little button over here. <clears throat> Attention all customers, this is to let you know that the 45th Durban International Film Festival is coming. It's presented by the Centre for the Creative Arts at the University of KwaZulu-Natal and it will take place from the 18th to the 28th of July. It is uh, the oldest and the largest film festival in Southern Africa, presenting over 100 screenings all of which are premieres in this region. And it's going to be over a bunch of different venues. There's Suncoast Cine Center, New Metro Pavilion, and the Stir Kinnickle and Gateway. Tickets are 80 Rand, and they can be purchased through each cinema's website. We are then also going to do something with the Bioscope later. Let's get into it. Have you guys got something to keep you busy? Yeah. What are you going to do, Gaddy? I'm going to go um, help Corbin with his homework. Nice. You brought your kid to work again. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, uh, I'm so glad I'm paying you by the hour for this. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Corbin, so let's uh, education first. There you go. Uh, GeForce? Um, I'm going to go work really hard, okay. which means I'm going to go play Destiny 2. Okay. All right. <laughs> you guys go do that. Uh, this is Bongaziwe Mabandla popping in to rent something. How's it? Good, good. How are you? 
I'm great, man. It's yes. so nice to see you. Yes, I know we've been uh, you you've been planning this for a while, <laughs> so it's I'm happy it's finally happening. Yeah, no, thank you, man. I appreciate you making the time. I've seen you um, a fair bit in the yeah. last few months, but mostly um, backstage, yeah, or or behind the scenes or at the hotel lobby the next morning, and uh, and I try my best to to plan these things with people, but life is life is chaotic. Yeah. It is. And and I know I think for the large part what you deal with with me being in short straw I think I've got a taste of it I think you've um been been living the most incredible years <laughs> traveling the world it's, yeah it's, it's lovely and I want to get into it but one of the one of the nuances that I think a lot of people don't know yeah when it comes to being a musician is that you sometimes do have a lot of time but it's not your own. You know, so you might be sitting around with lots of time on your hands, but you can't go and do stuff. Yeah. You know, if you're in the an exciting city and somewhere in the <laughs> world, you you're waiting for a sound check or you're yeah. waiting for a show. Yeah. So you can't, you know, I think only once you you know, get to certain points can you can you really carve out your own time. But for the most part, I think even for the world's most famous people, you you just you, you don't have control over your time. Yeah. Do you feel that sometimes? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, definitely it's been it's been a lot more an effort to find the time. Yeah. But out of all the musicians that we've had here at yeah. the video store, not all of them went to film school. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so you went to after. So I'm very curious yes. to see just around the corner. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how that might have informed you, how that might have um amplified yourself as a musician um and we're going to get into that yeah um but firstly you you've come back into our video store do you have anything to return what are you watching at the moment what are yeah. you enjoying i am returning uh, uh, the uh, back to black uh oh the film yes the amy winehouse film yes what did you think of it yeah i loved it i loved it it's very hard i think with these bios to to really crack it especially if the audience uh, really know the artist they know how they speak they know their mannerisms uh, and and finding the right actress i thought was must have been a, a huge challenge but I, I did love it i thought it was um i loved the the acting and the the actress and the portrayal of amy winehouse oh the story not maybe not so much yeah it's a tricky one and I, I went and watched it and i was considering whether or not we should screen it at the bioscope because yeah. you know we're a place for also live music we're a place for that old nostalgic sound which amy winehouse was very much a part of yeah. kind of reviving but i struggled with the movie a little I, I i saw where they were going i wondered whether or not it wasn't too soon to bring out an amy yeah, winehouse maybe. biopic yeah is and is her dad playing her dad no, but it felt like it. <laughs> no, it was very much. Is um, that not her dad? No, I don't think so. It, no. It's 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 almost like a lookalike. Yeah, well, then he was I, well cast. I thought it was her dad. But but, um, her her dad very much sort of gave the thumbs up on the movie. Yeah, and, yeah. And we and we know from kind of recent history that the dad it wasn't necessarily the best part of her life. Yeah, and, and also not the worst, I guess. Like, I think I've, I've followed the Amy Winehouse story a lot. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe you know it more than me. Yeah, I've watched the documentaries a lot. And and I do think that that is a challenge when you make a, a, a real movie about somebody real, very well known, is that which moments do you uh, include and which mm. ones do you take out? I think they were very strategic in the movie not to make it, you know, a, a movie about drugs. Yeah. Which which I think is a is a is a is a good choice, but I don't know from it trying to be too clean. I don't know. It's like it felt a bit too clean and it felt a bit too cookie coated for me. I don't know. Whether yeah, that's the right way. yeah, exactly. It, I think it moved away a little bit from what the real Amy Winehouse story is. Yeah, yeah. yeah interesting. Okay, it's lovely. So you you saw that. Um, how how are you in your life now? You you got any? tours coming up yeah. you just come off the back of something what what's where where are you right now uh we just came back from bushfire um oh, what was that like 
it was amazing, you know. I've been to Bushfire a couple of years ago, so it was great to be back and to, to like just have such a different experience. Bushfire is special. We we played it once as a band, and we yeah. were we loved it because it's it's a very much a world music festival. Sure, happens in Swaziland. It's been yes. going for ages. Yeah, it's so it's selling out. It's one of the festivals that sell out. Yeah, but it's it's acts from around the world. Yeah. So I remember we played and we were very much the sort of white indie rock band. Yeah. But we enjoyed the rest of the night moving through the venues and seeing, you know, yeah. bands from sort of parts of Europe and Middle East yeah. and you know with interesting instruments and Yeah, it's a very interesting. It's, per- it's perfect for you. I think it's uh, great. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. I I wanted to actually touch on that with your music, you've you've chosen to speak or sing in vernacular. Which language are you mostly speaking? Hossa. Okay. Yeah. And it's and it's quite strictly that, hey. Yeah. Yeah. It has been. Has yeah. it has it always been that? Because I feel like early days there could have been. Yeah, English, there was. Right? There was. There was two songs in English. Uh, yeah. But I, I think it's amazing, and I think it's great that you've been so st- so strongly. You know, your this is your language, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's so sort of proudly itself, yeah. which I think is great. And so for someone like myself, who I can admit, you know, doesn't understand a word, um, I I enjoy it on a sort of meditative level. Yeah, I guess. And yeah, um, yeah. and I'm just curious because you've traveled across the world. Yeah. H- how do they take the foreign language? How is that received? Yeah, I think, you know, like... Unlike us, South Africans, I think in other cultures, uh, listening to music that's not necessarily your own language, it's not out of the norm. Especially, I think, in places of, like, you know, Europe, where people have a a big understanding and appreciation of African music and almost knowing, like, oh, no, this is... This music comes from Zimbabwe. Yeah. You know, like having more knowledge than even our, our ourselves. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you don't you, you've never found it a problem with anything it's been in, it's been embraced. You know, as I become m- play more around the world, I think now it's something that I'm starting to 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 wonder now. I think for the in the past, it was like, you know, I'm a South African musician, you know, overseas was almost just something we kind of dipped in and dipped out. But now, as I think my career grows and, and overseas is something that's like becoming like basically a possibility, I wonder if, you know, I'm going to start to experiment with. Yeah, well, there's other, also nothing wrong. I mean, yeah. bring, in, bring in everything. What are some of the favorite places you've been? Oh, wow. Oh. If I could say, hey, you got a show tomorrow. Oh yeah. In your favorite city. Where would I where would I fly you? Paris. Okay. Yeah, Paris. I've enjoyed that. Uh, Mexico. Uh oh, cool. Uh, What's special about Mexico? It's 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 the history. Almost like you can see like like what's you know, the the past in sure. the architecture, you yeah, know. Sure, but I mean Paris is also old. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, I guess Mexico it's so different and 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 such a different and yet very similar culture to South Africa. Okay. You know, they are they are way they are religious, you know, uh uh monuments. Okay. Uh, but in the in the show, I would imagine Mexico could perhaps get a bit more loose. Yes. They can party a bit yes. more. These are the people that you know, yeah. drink tequila. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, as opposed to Paris, where perhaps they could be judgy, they could be quiet, quiet, and yes. you know, the the culture of Paris is, you know, you don't eat popcorn in the cinema. God help you that you make noise. Yes, I know, love in, that about, in cinema, which is lovely. I, I love that. Like when you play, you know, you can hear a pin drop in Paris. Yeah, yeah, France. Yeah, yeah. some I, places. Um, I, we found that very disconcerting, but then we absolutely loved it in Japan, that they would. Scream and shout, they'd be happy, 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 and then they'd be deathly Dead quiet because yeah, they yeah. are now waiting for the next song. It's yeah. it's a place of respect, yeah, where they could hear you know you on the stage go, uh, mm, what's next? <laughs> what are we playing? Next? And and the first time we did it, we found it so odd, and we didn't quite know what to do. But by the end, we we loved it because yeah. we we saw where it was, where it was coming from. Um, anything coming up? Uh, coming up. 
I'm working on a new album. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. yeah. <laughs> a big sigh. Um, yeah. what's, the, what's that process for you? Uh, where, where, do you record in the same place or are you trying something new? Yeah, I am trying new stuff. You know, also I have four albums. Yeah. And imagine, you know, like I didn't have like, like a big guitar. So I feel like I've used all the chords that, you know, all the variations. <laughs> so yeah. I'm drawing from a very different place. Um, and just like looking at where my career is, you know, I do have sort of pressure to to come up with something that's good. Yeah. Sure. But what is the different place that you're drawing from now? Uh, the language one was the one thing that okay, cool. I'm, I'm more experimenting with. And also, I'm I'm really trying to grow with my audience. You know, how can you keep people captivated for like eight, ten years, you know, of listening to your music, you know? You really need to also surprise yourself and them, if, you know, and go to other places that you've never been and, and almost sharpen your... You're expressing, yeah, kit. Yeah, no, like sharpen the pencils. And, but um, is that going to be sort of sonically? Are you going to play in sort of different musical genres, or, or play with different things, or is this more songwriting? Is it more sort of in the poetry of the words? I think it's more songwriting. I'm trying to 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 understand. You know, I'm. I feel like I'm really. I'm. I've really. I have a I finally have a this really good understanding about truth and relating it to the audience and them, you know, relating it to their own life. Yeah, so I'm just really trying to expand that and trying to be to I think that's what music should always be about. It's about, you know, expressing something so truthful and so honest. It's you know, it cripples the other person and yeah. And it's, yeah, it asks, you know, it makes them with a question or, yeah. I think just just seeing you describe this now, um, I can see why you enjoyed Back to Black. Yeah. You know, part of Amy Winehouse's struggle was her saying, I write these songs for me. These songs are my truth. Yeah. That's, what, that's, that's the one thing I did get from that movie. Yeah, yeah. And a reminder of, perhaps, you know, perhaps the documentary Amy um, yeah. is perhaps a better document on her life right now but either way the story of amy winehouse was her saying you know i, I write from from my yeah. personal experiences i need to i need to be true to me and if people come along with that then then that's great yeah i think she says a line like that in the movie that like i'm not interested i'm, I'm not a spice girl i'm no spice girl mm. and then she says as well you know uh, I, I, I'm i interested in writing about that life is so awful, you know, like writing from that place as well. But it's the authenticity. And so that's nice that you've focused on that because I think if your fans, no matter what you say or do, if it is from a authentic place and a place of truth, mm. then they'll go with you on it. Yeah. Um. You know, we, we're also a couple of albums deep I've lost count I think we're on about sort of five uh -huh. but you know there certainly was the one that I look back now with Short Straw and I'm like that was the one where we were, where we were a bit confused mm -hmm. we were we were making the songs we thought we should make yeah <laughs> and some of them worked and some of them didn't, didn't. And, yeah yeah and, but you could you could look back on it and go like okay we were a little like confused there yeah. but then the next album was like fuck it yeah. <laughs> you know, we're gonna make what we want to make and that was more fun <laughs> yeah yeah you know, and perhaps did better um but let's do a little uh, journey where did we grow up i grew up in the eastern cave a uh, small town called Sola. yeah okay what was that like i think my childhood really made me the artist i am today because it was very rural Okay. Not a not so so much TV and yeah. computers. Not a lot of cinema, I'm sure. Yeah, not <laughs> a lot of like interesting stuff to do. So you you know I kind of lived in my imagination and like and I I had I had like a an obsession for you know for for things I I couldn't do like you know we would play like concerts and things like that you know 
and I think the lack of seeing a real concert and the, and, and, and the imagination of it really like you know it's it made me obsessed kind of it about about things did you did you play some imaginary concerts to yeah to, to, to the lots trees of people? uh you know like if I, there was ever like a small platform I would like pretend it's a stage you know that's uh, lovely yeah uh using roll ons to, as mics yeah so there was always this, this like it's like you know you know growing up and, and you know seeing a mic for the first time and yeah and seeing a studio when did th- you when did you touch a guitar uh guitar you know first time i really touched it was in grade 11 yeah grade okay 11. what is that that's high school it's high school yeah, yeah. um was there any film that might have come to you in that sort of early childhood time oh, be it yeah. something that you watched on a tv or i don't know was there a cinema C- oh yeah you, i mean what was the biggest town uh, i mean the biggest town was islandia and cape town you know i did travel you know a lot to cape town you okay. know to okay Big so you weren't so you, were, yeah. you weren't too stuck in the no town. no 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 i wasn't too stuck and you know but 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 also I feel like w- even when I went to big cities I was always like fascinated by this and by that. Yeah. You know I remember the Whoopi Goldberg, Goldberg movie Sister Act. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a lovely movie. Yeah. Both of those were great. I mean you realize the second one was Lauren Hill. Yes. That was her. That was her introduction to yes, the world. Yes. Yes. Not knowing the world's, also the world's how she would impact my life. Yeah. Much later. Um, but there was a wholesomeness to that. I mean, there was obviously a big Christian, yeah, you know, um, prod. <laughs> but uh, it came from a good place, and of course, it was all about the joy of singing. It, yeah, it, it got most people excited. It was about a classic, life. right? Yeah, I've, absolute I classic. Think so. Yeah, it was. Everybody loved it. It was like on on in buses. It was like it was like they had mm. a huge like roll out but it's lovely that that was one of the ones that came to you yeah, first but the movie that like i really started to love and i think it, it this movie is very much like my music and like it it was the first it, and i watched this movie on etv yeah yeah uh it was color purple the color purple yeah the color okay. purple yeah um so i am guilty of never seeing it <laughs> um it was a book yes Alice, Alice Walker, Walker book. book. Yes. Then Oprah Winfrey put everything on the line to make the movie, which she acted in. No, it was Steven... Steven Spielberg directed it. Yes. But Oprah Winfrey starred in it, hey? Starred in it. I don't know if she produced it back okay, then. But she, I think, but she, f- yeah, she got in it. Uh, I've got a feeling it. she did whatever she could to be in the movie. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Basically, she... And she got the part of Sophia. And yeah, this movie, like, I love this movie. Mm. Like it's because it really deals, you know, with inward world that people, you know, everything that I've sort of every movie that I've all I've watched before then is almost like so it reminds me of Tracy Chapman's music, okay, as well. It's like w- what do you mean by the inward world? Yeah, like every every movie I'd ever watched was talking about, you know. Uh, trying to revenge my father, you know, the, okay. everything outside. And then in this movie, it says, Dear God, I've always been a good girl. Yeah. I'm hoping that you can give me a sign that's, you know. Okay, it's, so it's like more introspective. Very, like, much about, like, you know, how, not how the person is doing physically, but how the person is feeling inwardly and yeah. how they view their world from the inside. Have you seen the 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 redo recently? They they yes because I think they okay. So the movie came out. I'm trying to think. Nineties, eighties, nineties. The color purple, the first one that yes. we're talking about. Then I believe it then became a stage play, a where Broadway they, stage with yeah, where they turned it into a musical. Yeah, with just uh, Jennifer Hudson and them. Yes, you are right. Because because I think the stage play existed, and then they thought, let's make a movie version of, of the this stage. musical. Yeah, which is the new. And I know the director. Uh, That's what it, came out recently. What's so his name? Color uh, Purple. The, the new Color Purple. Is it bl- bl- uh, I'll tell you in a moment. Yes, I do know him. And he's a great guy. I've met him, actually. And uh, the oh, director. Wow. He comes to South Africa a lot. Okay, what was that like? He's a great guy, you know. And it's, it's interesting to just see somebody and then in like 
ATLs you see them, they direct in the new color purple with Blitz. The, Blitz. Uh, Blitz buzzer buzzer wule. Yeah, Blitz. Yeah. Okay. Blitz. Yeah. That's a cool name. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so those movies th- those movies have have had oh, I've got a t- feeling we've screened another film by Blitz. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. I think that's a that's a good pick. Yeah. Um over to high school. Uh that Wait. was high school. Okay. Okay, do okay. you want me to go first back? Well, before? let's maybe put Sister Act as your as the first one. No, I, I don't. Okay, wanna, you want someone else? You know, okay. I have to be honest. If I before my childhood film that I ever watched. Oh, now I'm so torn with so many films. There can the, be a bunch. It doesn't have to be one. Okay. I mean, Sarafina. Okay. Was like, you know. Yeah. Like the first, like, I don't know, like, basically imagination I had. And like, I don't know. The basis, the first movie I probably ever watched. Okay. And of course, it's just filled with lovely music. Yes. As well as a musical. So that makes sense that it spoke to you in a particular way. Yeah. Not only... Not only were you perhaps seeing a part of yourself as like a school kid yes. in Africa, um, but you were hearing music. Yeah, and I feel like that film, a lot of us saw it because, you know, I think we saw it around 94. It was like okay. the only kind of movie that black families would sort of like play and it would be like the only movie. <laughs> yeah. So you'd watch it again and again and again and again yeah. and again until you know how to, yeah. Sing all the songs. But I remember in grade three, I went to watch Lion King. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that that comes up like pretty often on the really? video store as people's like, <laughs> as most people's puppy love film. Yeah. Just because it was as good as it was. Yeah. I did I did not know that I had so, ma- so much feelings. I think I was nine years old and I went to the cinema. It was a school thing. And I watched this movie and I didn't really... I didn't think I cared much about movies. You're talking about Lion King? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the part where he loses his dad. Yep. And Big cry. And I lost it in the movies. Yeah. And I cried so much and I didn't really know I had that side. Yeah, yeah. To myself at grade <laughs> three. Yeah. I was really surprised. Ooh, there's that room in my, in my brain. Yeah, like, um, wow. No, why are you crying? No, because it was fucking sad. It was a bit. It was well done. It was a huge moment, and of course, he felt that he had done it. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Eh? Um, it also blew my mind later in life when someone told me that that's the story of Hamlet. Oh, it's I Shakespeare's know. Hamlet. Yeah. I, I didn't know. It. Yeah, yeah. No, the whole thing of the uncle killing the dad. Him being banished, coming no back. Way. Yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, it's mind blowing. Eh? I thought it was a proudly South African story. No, no, listen, it very much is. And I think the best part about uh, The Lion King was that in the year that it was released, Disney were more interested in Pocahontas. Lion King was their B team. They put most of their money, most of their effort into Pocahontas. I love Pocahontas. Also. It's good. Yeah. But Lion King was yeah. fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I just love the fact that the the sort of underdog animation oh. team pulled off what they pulled off. Oh yeah. And it's just one of the most incredible movies. I've also seen the musical. Yeah, great, right? Oh my goodness. Did you watch it at the at Monte Cassino yes, when it came out? Yes, yeah. I I somebody had gave me a ticket and yeah. I was like, ah yeah, I'll go, yeah, so far. <laughs> and then I went and I sat down and then they play and you know they start with the circle of life. And you and your eyes just fill up with tears. And I screamed so much. I was like, ah! because that first song, it's just like It's powerful, man. Everything about your childhood, everything that's beautiful. It's yeah. just like it's amazing how theater can can, yeah. can move you like that. Uh, I had a very interesting experience watching The Lion King at Monte Cassino. This cute little girl behind us was obviously just too excited and too overwhelmed and had been given some rich milkshake or slush puppy or something and shame she vomited <laughs> and, and a part of it got got on me and i sort of turned around a little sort of begrudgingly and then i saw this cute little girl's face and oh. i was just like don't worry my girl just oh. as long as you can stay for the rest of this uh, like yeah, you must yeah. enjoy it um but another great thing i'm gonna share short straw took part in this big sort of citywide festival in japan yeah in Osaka, 
uh, 400-something bands or 300 bands. Oh, wow. 299 of them were all Japanese, one foreign band, Short Straw. Yeah. Okay, and we and it's 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 one of those uh, festivals. Joburg's attempted it every now and again, where they take over the live music clubs. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, not yeah. like a big field festival. Oh yeah, I've seen. It's that. like a c- cross city festival, and so we start. We arrived a day or two earlier, and so we noticed from watching all these shows, and I think you'd find this interesting, how the Japanese bands do these shows at festivals. Every venue's got a curtain. So the curtain closes and the band, you can hear like boom, boom, ching, 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 you know, as they sort of line check and get set up. They've got 15 minutes to quickly get on stage. Then um, when it's time to go, the, the curtain opens and every band came on to a song. Yeah. Someone else's song, like an intro song. And we thought, oh, fuck, well, now we got to get an intro song. Every other band is doing this. Then we thought, well, what fucking intro song should we come on to? <laughs> Lion, Lion King, King. <laughs> <laughs> you know the opening, uh, uh, and it and it just worked so, so well at I'm this so festival uh, because you know the audience coming were like, oh, this band's from Africa, uh, <laughs> so we had to we had to give them we had to give them something African, oh, wow. and it worked totally well. They loved it. I can imagine. And we, then we kept it up for the rest of the tour for no reason. <laughs> we just kept doing we just kept doing Lion King. So as the, the circle of life. That yeah that. Ah, Oh, that's so good. Um, okay, so high school uh, got a little more serious in the sense that it was color purple. Yeah. Perhaps, um, you know, issues like prejudice and yeah, racism yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. history was, was starting to kind yeah. of seed itself. Yeah. Uh, where did you go to high school? I went to Later Gray Arts Academy. Yeah. It's is that in the Eastern Cape? Eastern Cape, so like an art high school, yeah. An art high school? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay, so there was more of a focus on the cultural yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at this point, did we started making music? Yeah, a little bit, not knowing, you know. I just, just like started learning a bit of guitar, written a few songs, but just only for friends. Okay, and, and your folks were supporting you in that? Yeah, I was supposed to be an actor, hence I went to AFTA. Okay, so after then was a was about acting. Yeah, I was went to after to be an actor. I was very serious about being an actor. I was very determined that I'm, I was going to be a really great actor. Okay, because you forget that after has the acting component. It always started more as a film school, yeah. the making of films, but then they yeah. did, they did add the performance. I mean, it's always had actors, right? I'm, I, it's my ignorance, sorry. Yeah, it's always had actors. It's always been a film school, so I guess everything around film. So what I guess people didn't know, it, it then got a music side. Oh, cool. So like halfway to my degree, I actually moved to music. So I was doing music and acting, but okay. I was, and then my focus just moved to more music. Okay, yeah. what kind of an actor did you want to be? Oh, well, I wanted to be on Isidingo. Okay. <laughs> that was a big, this is like the reason I came to Joburg, is to be an actor on Isidingo. Okay. And did you do much acting? I did. I was on Generations. Oh, really? Yeah, for, um, for a couple of years. Oh, shit. I missed that. Sorry. I did Sakula and Partners. Uh, I like, did serious act- like serious act, like seriously dramatic stuff? Could you be a bit funny? What no. You, what kind of st- I, okay. So the jobs I did, I did, I did that. I did uh, a children's learning TV okay. thing. Okay. I forgot what it was called. Okay. Tough job. Yeah. Uh, no, kids, kids stuff's hard. And it's uh, maths. It's maths. Oh shit! So <laughs> I didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and. And then I did Generations. I did, um, you know, not very serious. Like, you know, playing like an ad executive. Okay. Like, you know, today's okay. pitch is, you know, vibes like this. I did, I did, I did a movie. Oh, yeah? Uh, a Million, A Million Colors. Yes. A Million Colors. With one dealer. Okay. Uh, okay. Which is the movie about the, the e lollipop film? Oh, about the guy when he's older. Yes. The, okay. Yeah. It, e lollipop's a very famous South African film of a of a relationship between a young white boy and a young black boy. Yes. Sort of living on a farm and 
Yes, and then this was a this was the sort of biopic of the yeah of, the of, black the, guy. of their life. You know what happened to them, so it looks at them. You know, oh, these I remember act- that movie. It was a it was a celebrated film. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was in that. That was my big movie moment. Okay. Had so much fun, and then I've just now recently, a few years ago, I was in Baloji's movie called Oga, uh, shot in DRC. And it went to Cannes and it won. Oh, we're going to hopefully screen that later this year. Oh, really? Yeah. Omen. I mean, that's Omen or Belo- Yes. It's got two names. Omen, yes. Omen. Omen's the sort of English name. Yes, Omen. That looks beautiful. We screened it as part of the Joburg Film Festival. Really? Earlier this year. And we're going to, we, we're talking about um, a release later this year. Yeah. It yeah. looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that film. Oh, is lovely. Yeah. Okay. But when you're at AFTA and you're surrounded by all these other film students. Um, Do you have a film that you can think back on that that came to you at that point that sort of, these films tend to sort of crack open uh, more parts of your brain? Um, I would say like a movie that I started to like religiously watch uh, is the movie called Monster. Oh, with Charlize Theron. Yeah. Okay. I can only watch that movie once. <laughs> I know. People have such a hard time with that movie. It's a tough movie. And it's, it's, like, it's I don't know. I kind of relate to that movie in some ways. Okay. You know, growing oh. up poor, you know, um, trying to survive. And just like that whole, I guess, living. And hof- hopefully not murdering Or prostituting. People. Not yet. <laughs> no prostitution yet. But no, I just could relate about growing up on the on the other side of, of yeah. the tracks. No, sure. And I think, you know, people forget what that means. And when you when you realize that there's no one to call on to help when yeah. these things happen. Yeah. And that movie just really shows you, like, you know, when somebody is neglected and rejected and, like, cast aside, you know, what that can manifest in them. You know, this, you know, the whole movie... You know, she starts off, she says, you know, uh, dear God. Also very much a color purple, you know. Oh. We are, you know, we are in the mind of, of of this prostitute who's like, you know, starts off, she's like, you know, I, you know, I was ready. She says I was, I, I, I was ready to kill myself. But then I realized that all I have is 20 bucks. So if I shoot myself, I would have sucked whoever I, for free. Yeah. So... All I have is this 20 bucks. So when it's gone, so am I. So if you've got something for me in this world, yeah. uh, bring it on. And, you know, and she falls in love, yeah. you know, that night when she's about to, like, end it. Yeah. And and that's how the, you know, it's like a love story, basically, the whole yeah. movie. And she falls in love and she feels so committed to this relationship. She's willing to do anything. Yeah. Lovely, man. Um, then the music takes off. Yeah. When did that? I, I, you know, you've 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 been around, and I've sort of <laughs> and I've sort of been watching Forever. and seeing. You know, I, I want to share one moment, which was uh, something you didn't know necessarily about. I I remember walking past um, a performance of you in Melville. I was sort of walking up Seventh Street once, mm-hmm. as one does when you're in varsity late at night on a Thursday. Often is when I went to Melville. I forget which night it was. And, uh, and I peered in through a window and I was watching you perform. And it was a smaller club show. Obviously, your shows have grown exponentially since. But the early days, and, and I could see how, how engaged the audience was. And I thought that was really special. You don't see that too often. And I, and I just saw how you had sort of built this crowd up over the course of however long and I was I watched for a few minutes from the window and I just remember like you got something you got <laughs> something special thank you um what is yeah what's that journey been like for you it's been really tough it's, it's, it's taken us so so much time I even forgot like all the missions and all yeah. the all, everything we've put in yeah I do think, you know, also coming from an uh, acting background and a the theatrical background, I think I was able to to take a little bit of that and add, put it into my music as well. Like 
like put on a character or sort of put on no, a show? No, I mean, what, what do you mean? No, I mean like being on stage, yeah, performing, being emotional, expressing emotion, you know, comfortably. I find yeah. I, I I find it very interesting. Have you seen this other band, uh, Neon Dreams? No, they're a great band. They're from Canada, but they're spending more and more time here. But um, you you remind me a little similar to the to the singer. Yeah. Um, it, it, it just to some degree, and what I'm going to talk about, let's say less about Neon Dreams, more about you. You 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 present yourself as often being quite a quiet guy. Yeah. But there's there's so much confidence on stage. Ah. <laughs> Is that true? Do, do, does that make sense? That yeah. Do, yeah, do you I've feel like you that. do you feel like you're able to be more comfortable on stage than in real life? Does that make sense? Yeah, I've I've no I have not noticed that, but like I I have a lot of stage frights, and okay. and like I have like anxiety, like you know, Bef- before or during, before or during, you know, okay. and I don't know, and I try and mask it, maybe okay. I, by masking it, because a friend of mine said, you know, I said, you know what, I'd, <laughs> you know, this next tour, I'm gonna be really confident, yeah, and she said. <laughs> I, do you think you could be more confident than you already are? <laughs> and I was quite surprised that I give out this like really confident. Yeah, they, I mean, there's certainly just a control, and 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 I think that is part of what brings the audience in. It's just this comfort that 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 you've got them. And oh, I think, yeah. and I think, you know, it's, that's why some of the you know the biggest musicians in the world are often the ones that seem a bit more arrogant because it's there's a confidence to sort of their yeah, stage show. I wonder. I do wonder. I, um, it's interesting. Yeah, I do think like I've 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 I've, I've performed so much now. Yeah. That I think maybe. You definitely get used to it. It's the kind of yeah, thing you get used I, to. Yeah, if I I wonder if if you like, it's not something I've learned to, to turn on like yeah on stage. Yeah, but I definitely mean naturally. It's gotten a lot better now, a bit of because I've put in a lot of work, mental work, practicing. But I used to be terrified to go on stage, mm-hmm. and I used to feel like everyone is just watching a ball of nerves. <laughs> uh, what's been one of the biggest shows you've ever played? I want. I want to. I want to say bushfire, okay. but no. I think I can't remember. You know, I really can't remember r- right, right now. No, lovely man. Uh, okay, our last film is the film you could settle down with. This is the the oh, film you could marry. Yeah, yeah. Could be one of the previous films. It could just be something else. Okay, I'm. I'm gonna have to think. Which film did I love? Could it be a documentary? It could be anything you want. It could even be a TV show. But documentary is nice. What are you thinking? Yeah, I watch a lot of documentaries. I love documentaries. Uh, I've watched uh, the um, the Nina Simone documentary. Okay. Uh, uh, it's called uh, What Happened. What, what's Miss Nina? Yeah. What, what is it called? Uh, what Happened, Miss Nina? I think. Okay. What Happened, Miss Nina? Let's try find it. Yeah. Uh, um, I love this documentary. Yeah, just like showing a whole life and showing it so accurately and so like like we was talking uh, what happened miss simone miss simone yes what happened she she's a very interesting story yeah and i think people don't quite know i don't even quite know she sort of disappeared right she sort of had a big career and then she sort of consciously took herself out yeah she's had a dynamic dynamic life and definitely you know she was like one of those people that was pro black yeah, when, very passionate activist when it way before way before it was a thing and right at the height of her career she decided like you know what i don't want to make like you know like uh just dancing music i want to make conscious music you know and she wrote songs like to be young gifted and black you know yes. and like this and like just such a dynamic life such a talented 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 genius musician and like what i love about this documentary it just shows you that like like how complex also being yeah. um, a genius can be and what it what it comes with as well yeah lovely man yeah (laughs) yeah no i think i think 
the courage that it takes for those people, especially at a certain point in their life, to once again, it's what we keep coming back to, this idea of, you know, being authentic to yourself, you know, pushing what matters to you. Yeah. Um, as I said, I unfortunately don't understand a lot of what you're saying, but d- does politics come into it? Not politics, but does is there a consciousness that you that you bring in? Uh, my pre- my previous albums have been really like about love and relationships, and I don't know if maybe that's also super politi- political. Po- uh, political, sorry, but perhaps the wrong word. But sort of uh, c- consciousness. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of my music is really, I think, when I see it, you know, it's about trying to get happy, trying to get free, trying to find belonging, trying to find meaning. I think all of my songs have a little element like that. Lovely, man. Yeah. Listen, thank you for your time. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. I the visit. To you. It's my um, pleasure. I, uh, I often um, then try and find something for you to rent. Yes. So I would love to have you... You know, you've returned some films, but yes. I'd love to give you something to watch. Okay. What are you what are you in the mood for now? Uh maybe like a good South African film. Good South African film. Yes. Uh I've got something, I think. Uh there is a documentary, because you said you like yeah. documentaries. There is a documentary that has just been made. It is going to premiere at Encounters, okay. which is a film festival. Yes, I've worked that, there. That the bi- you worked there. Yeah, <laughs> right, cool. <laughs> uh, the Bioscope is going to be one of the one of the um, venues for it. It's a documentary called "Black People Don't Get Depressed." Okay, uh, yeah. Which just by its title sounds sounds intriguing. interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things where we'll screen it once as part of Encounters, uh, yeah. and then with a bit of luck, depending on the film's life. We could do more screenings of it at the Bias Good. All right. But uh, the name sort of says a lot, but yeah. it obviously deals with uh, the health. perception of mental health in yeah. South Africa. So it should be a goodie. So let's rent you that. And do you have um, Yesterday? That would be good. Yeah. Hey, Daryl I, I love, I love that movie. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Same, also the same... L- what's her name? Leleti. L- Leleti. Yes. Kamala. She was in Sarafina. Sarafina yeah, yeah. Okay, so you haven't seen Yesterday. I have, but it's worth it. I love that movie. You could, you could give it. It's a also the movie like it's there with Monster. I can, I, I know, I can uh, speak along the mo- with the movie. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> great. All right. So we'll give you Yesterday to rewatch. Uh, yeah. And um, we'll give you Black People Don't Get Depressed as well, a documentary. Always. Lovely. Thanks, man. We'll Thank s- you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Cheers. All right. Like a chat. Nice. How's the game? A great time. <laughs> <laughs> any customers? <laughs> I any, don't know. Any business? That's not my problem. <laughs> oh, God. And how was Corbin's homework? Uh, I had to do more math. I didn't <laughs> think this is where I was going to be in my life at this yeah. point. But you're a smart guy. Yeah, math's fine. You <laughs> you did pretty well in maths. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Math. <laughs> <laughs> Until they started introducing letters. Uh, then it just became weird, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, like Corbin brought out the scientific calculator the other day. <laughs> Corbin's eight. Well, he found it somewhere. Okay, I was about <laughs> to say, like, he's not doing trigonometry. <laughs> no, no, no. No, he's just like, look, oh, look what I found. And I'm just like, oh, I'm just like brought back nightmares yeah. of sun and cos and yes. tan. And like, I'm still oh. not entirely sure what, yeah, what that actual use is. Uh, Physics makes sense. Yes, like engineering. Geom- like geometry makes so much so sense. So much sense. Yes. Just basic maths makes sense. But yeah. like trig... What? What? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't. I can't see it. The moment it goes from sums to equations, yeah, I'm out. No, but a handful of it makes sense. But that the the sin, cos, and tan didn't yeah. make any sense to me. And <sighs> um, shout out to what is actually funny enough our most listened to episode oh, yeah? in the history of the video store is the interview with Jonathan Rocksmith. Oh yes, and he talks about he got asked to go back to his high school to give a. Um, like a commencement speech okay. of sorts. And he said, oh, and by the way, <laughs> you're never going to use Sin Cos and Tan <laughs> in your life. <laughs> and apparently he started like a little coup <laughs> where a whole bunch of uh, uh, maths kids in, in Northcliffe sort of refused to then do it. <laughs> he, he launched a coup, he said. Nice. It's just so funny the way you said it. 
All right, Magic, thank you guys. Mm. Thanks for a lovely day. Thanks for a great week here. Yeah. Um, all previous episodes can be found at the video store.co.za. We've had a, a host of other musicians, the likes of Matthew Mole and Neon Dreams and Ross from Prime Circle and now his solo career. There's, no. there's, there's loads of musicians and it's, it's always lovely talking to them and, and seeing how cinema has influenced their music and how the two are sort of just so interlinked. So yeah. All the previous episodes are there and social media, chime in. Let us know what you think, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Yeah. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. <laughs>